Um, I'm, I'm going to talk today from the thought, the courage to stand. Mm -hmm. Somebody say the courage, courage. to stand. How many know we can do much more together Amen. than we can do individually? Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, Going to turn in the book of uh, Exodus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing by your spirit. Mm -hmm. God, God, when he talked to his people, Israel, mm -hmm. he talked to his people. He talked to Moses, yes. but Moses was to talk, was to relay the words that God said to him to his people, yes. Israel. Amen. It wasn't just for one person. It was for a people. We can do more together Amen. than we can do alone. God spoke to Israel. God called Israel to be his people. He called Jacob. He called Abraham. He made a covenant with Abraham. He told Abraham in Genesis 12, 1 and 2, he said to leave your people, your kindred, Leave your family, and I'm going to make of you a great person. That ain't what he said. He didn't say person. He said, I'm going to make of you a great nation. God told Abraham, I'm going to make of you a great nation. And what he was saying, the nation is not an ethnicity, not in the Bible. They try to make that. I have to clarify, I'm going to be clarifying a lot of things today. Because this society, what the Bible says is pretty clear. But a nation in the Bible was the largest unit of a family. Yes. It was called a nation. The nation of Israel had 12. Jacob, who was Israel, had 12 sons. His 12 sons fathered the 12 tribes of Israel. Right? But they were brothers. The children of Israel, just think of that, children. They were children. Of one man, Israel. Yeah. It was a family. It was a nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's what a nation was in the Bible. It was descendants of one person. Uh -huh. The nation of the Canaanites were descendants of Canaan. The nation of uh, Ethiopians, which was what the Greeks called the Cushites, mm -hmm. they were descendants of Cush, who was the son of Ham. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody was a descendant of somebody okay. in the Bible. So God told Abraham, I'm going to make of you a great nation. In other words, God told Abraham to leave your family. Yes. This family was serving other gods. So God told Abraham to leave your family, and I'm going to make it. You, oh, you do what I say. Yes. If you leave your family, I'm going to reward you with a great family of your own. Yes. Thank you. Many descendants. And that was a big thing back in the Bible days, to have many descendants. But God promised Abraham, if you leave your family, go to a place that I will show you, Genesis 12, 1 and 2 and 3. It says, I'm going to make of you a great, I'm going to make of you a great nation. Because God moves in nations. Amen. That's how he does his work, through people. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Exodus 14. Mm -hmm. We're going to start at verse not to do a, too much reading. It's all good. We're going to start at verse 8. This is when children of Israel were being delivered. Somebody said delivered. Yeah. They were in the process of being delivered. Mm -hmm. God, in verse 8, Genesis, I mean, excuse me, Exodus 14 and 8. Bible says, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Yes. And he pursued after Israel, and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. Mm -hmm. They went out victorious. They were bold. They went out very confident. Mm 
It went out with a high hand. Verse 9. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea besides Pihahiroth Pihahira, before Beelzephon. I'm going to keep reading. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said, Moses, so they cried out to God. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, Hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Verse 12. Is not this the word that, that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians mm -hmm. than that we should die in the wilderness. Verse 13, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. Yes. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see them no more forever. Verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Thank you for your word. Thank you. We're talking about the courage to stand. Thank you. It takes courage to stand. Yes. It takes courage to stand. But God said, stand still. Amen. And see the salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But the Israelites. So, so God was delivering them out of slavery, mm -hmm. out of bondage. Uh -huh. They had, the Bible says, the Bible says that God heard the cries of the children of Israel mm -hmm. when they were in bondage. Amen. He sent Moses. Moses was on the in, in, in Midian at this time, mm -hmm. on the run from Pharaoh. Amen. God told Moses, I'm going to use you. To deliver your people. Yes. Moses didn't understand that because Moses didn't see it in himself. Amen. Right? Moses was like, You sure you, you sure you got the right guy? Mm -hmm. I can't talk good. You know, I'm, I'm, the Bible says Moses said something about how he can't talk good. Mm -hmm. You know, surely there's somebody else that can do this better than me. God chooses foolish things of this world to confound the wise. If God tells you, if God calls you, he equips you. Yes. He don't wait till after. It, 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 it's not that he calls and then equips. He's already equipped you if he calls you. That's right. Like you said in Sunday school, it's just good to take God at his word. But Moses didn't see it in himself, like a lot of us. We see our weaknesses. Anyway, so, so, so God had called Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But, but, but God's people, Israel, had been praying. They were crying and they were praying yes. to be delivered out of bondage. Amen. Now, when God is delivering them, mm -hmm. now they fussed at Moses. Didn't we tell you it was better for us to be enslaved? Mm -hmm. The problem was the situation they were in mm -hmm. was unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. But God was in the process of delivering Israel or saving Israel. I say all the time, God is taking us somewhere we've never been before. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is imperative that we take him at his word. Yes, it is. 
God knows what he's doing. We don't know. We see to the corner, but God sees around the corner. Amen. Right? Amen. When Pharaoh, verse 10 says, when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Now, I'm going to say this. The feeling of fear is a natural thing. It's a natural. It is natural. It is, it, it is actually a, a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. Something is not right. But, as we're going to see, so verse 11 says, They said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness. Because there were no graves in Egypt. So you brought us out here to die. You wasn't trying to deliver us. You brought us out here to die. This, this is what fear does to your mind. It'll take you to, to you know, first place. I mean, it just takes you to backwards places. We were praying for deliverance. Now when we're out here in a strange land, unfamiliar, because we've been in bondage for all these years. God is delivering his people mm -hmm. and they're complaining about how he's delivering them. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Amen. So they said, because there were no graves in Egypt, mm -hmm. you, take the, you brought us out here to die in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Verse 11 says, wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt. Verse 12. And this is just, is not this the word that we did tell thee when we were in bondage? Mm -hmm. Let us alone. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be free. Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying. Yeah. They're saying, we told you, Moses, we don't want to be free. Mm -hmm. But they, they left. <laughs> they must have really wanted to be free because they're out there. But they're in a they're, they're in a unfamiliar situation. Yes, they said, "Let us alone." They said, "Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, mm -hmm. saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians?'" Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about this. They said, they are fussing at Moses. Mm -hmm. verse, at the end of verse 10, so they cried out to the Lord, but then they said they fussing at Moses. Mm -hmm. But it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. How important is freedom to you? What are you really willing do to be free. How much are you really willing to do what God said in order to truly be free? Not free just for yourself, but free to serve. Yes. But you got to be home. Yes, you do. Mm. He said, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us mm -hmm. to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking in my mind right now about the reality of being released from slavery. I'm thinking about our people now. I was listening to some... So back in the 30s and 40s, uh, some... Some white people went out and made some recordings of some people who were been in, had been enslaved, right? So they, so they made some recordings and just asking them about slavery. This is in the 30s and 40s. They would have been older because slavery was over in 1865, somewhere in there, right? 63, 60. So, and yeah, it was different times at different places. So these were older people. So they, but they, it's a, they're, they're out on, on, on YouTube. It's interviews, they're audio interviews of, of people who were enslaved. So they're talking about they're asking them questions about how it was in slavery. Mm -hmm. 
some stuff out there that's right now we can actually hear them talking. And so I'm reminded of one particular lady who was being interviewed, I can't remember her name. Uh, most of them didn't really know how old they were. You know, they said, how old are you? They said, oh, I'm about 71, because they just didn't know, right? Mm -hmm. But she was making a point when, when he asked her about, uh, they call it, they call it, when they were free, they call it the break, right? They call it the break. Mm -hmm. and so, so he asked her, he said, Did you, do you remember the break? No, I call it the break out, but there's a break. She said, yeah, I remember it. But, and he was asking her about it. And but she was making a point. She said, she said, um, yeah, you know, it was, she said it was, um, it was kind of like, I never forget, she said it was kind of like letting a whole bunch of cattle loose. Mm -hmm. She said, because we didn't have nowhere to work. She said, you know, you have to, when you, she's making a point, when you're enslaved, at least you have something to eat and you have a roof over your head, mm -hmm. right? But they were released. Now they got to get a job. They got to have somewhere to sleep. They got to, you know what I'm saying? It was rough yeah. when they were released. That was a soberness that she brought to this whole concept of so-called being free from <laughs> slavery. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, this was a reality uh, 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 or, uh, you know, a certain uncertainty that they weren't used to. They said, he said, it, it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians because they did have food, they did have shelter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they weren't free. They were in bondage. Mm -hmm. They didn't like that life when they was in it. But all of a sudden, freedom was not very important. This is why I was asking, what are you willing to do? How important is it? Or you. They said, for it, it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians. I'm stuck on that because I just see that so much. Mm -hmm. I see that so much today yes. in, in my people, mm -hmm. in black people. Mm -hmm. I see it so much. Mm -hmm. We are so comfortable mm -hmm. in still being in bondage. That we just don't want to talk about it. It mm -hmm. is not God's will. No. It ain't in the Bible. Like Grandma says, not in the home. It ain't nowhere that it's God's will for anybody to not be free. Amen. Amen. You know, um, I'm, 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 I'm all, always, uh, I always repeat this saying. I can't remember the guy who, who, who said it. He said, uh, don't judge a man by his answers. You judge a man by his questions. Mm -hmm. Or it is the questions that, that, that determines what you seek for an answer. Mm -hmm. I always say, so if I look at you and I just said four, mm -hmm. you just stare at me. Right? Don't mean nothing. But if you ask me what's two plus two, and I said the same word four, yes. now that four means something. Yes. Because you asked a question, mm -hmm. and I answered your question. So an answer without a question sometimes can be sometimes can be what I call Greek. Mm -hmm. It don't mean much if there's no question there. Right. So many times it's dependent on what you have, what, what. What is God telling you? What is important to you? Yes, thank you. Right? Yeah. These Israelites had got to a point to where this struggle was not worth it. I'd rather go back and be in bondage. At least I could eat. Mm -hmm. But that was not God's plan. That's not God's will. That's not God's design for us. Even when so so we 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 get the miss we, we get the misinformation that because God is delivering us or doing something for us that it's not going to cost us nothing. We won't have to fight mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. But when God promised Israel the promised land, Joshua they didn't just give it to Joshua. The Canaanites didn't just say, "Okay, y'all y'all God told you you can have it, so here you go." 
No, they had to fight. Yes. Yes. They had to do something. This is the point. Amen. So how important is how important is it? Because if it's not important to you, you're not going to have the courage to stand. That's right. Amen. Verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. I know what you're feeling. I know what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. But don't let that fear control you. Yeah. Don't let that fear distract you from what God said. Right. What did God say? God told them in the previous chapter, Exodus 13, there's a lot in there, but the 14th verse, he says, God is talking to them. He, and God, had already, God had already told them. Exodus 13, it's 14, it says, God says, and it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what is this? Thou shalt say unto him, by the strength of the hand of the Lord. By strength of hand, the Lord brought us out from Egypt, from the house of bondage. Yeah. God was telling them what he was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. He already told them what he was going to do. Yeah. But, when the rubber meets the road in the realness of life, mm -hmm. I'd rather be, I, I would rather just leave things the way they are. Mm -hmm. No courage to stand. Verse 13, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. Don't let that fear distract you from what God said. Amen. What did God tell you? It is so important. This is why we stress it in this word. Yes. Because God speaks to you. If he don't speak to you audibly, he will speak to you through his word. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. God's promises are yes and amen, but they are in his word. Amen. Get you a word, something you can stand on. Amen. Yeah. Something that's gonna something that's gonna lead you through the storm. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Something that's gonna something that's gonna guide you that, that don't make sense to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Uncle was saying, but I got to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> How about driving this storm this morning? <laughs> Sunday school. But it was just, you know, it don't make no sense for me to be out here in this mess, but I got to keep going. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need a word from the Lord. Just one word. Move all down. So Moses said unto the people, verse 13, Exodus 14, 13, Fear ye not, but stand still. And see the salvation yes. of the Lord, uh -huh. which he will show you today. God is going to show you his salvation. Yes. Don't let the devil push you around. Don't let the enemy push you around. Don't let the winds of life push you around. Yes, it's real. Yes, this stuff is real. Hey, yeah. yeah, this stuff is real. A word. You need a word. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. You need a word. Moses says, Fear ye not, stand still mm -hmm. and see salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That word salvation means deliverance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God was delivering them Amen. out of bondage, out of what they had been praying for. Amen. Mm -hmm. God was doing something. God was answering their prayers. Yeah. He says, says, see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye see today, ye shall see them again no more. Maybe next week. Forever. He said forever. He said these Egyptians, you ain't gonna see them no more. But you got to stand still. Yes. You got to stand on what I told, what God told you. 
It's never too late to get a word. Amen. Verse 14 says, The Lord shall fight for you. He shall hold your peace. See, they was coming out of slavery. They weren't in a position to fight. Israel didn't fight until they got in their land. But at this time, they were coming out of slavery. They weren't in a position to fight the Egyptians. So God said, uh, Moses said, the Lord shall fight for you. Just hold your peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so, so this was Israel on the run from Egyptians. Children of Israel. Now, I always say, if it's not in context, it's not true. If it's not in context, it is not true. Context is everything. So I'm just going to I'm going to piece this together because we're going to get into some stuff. But this is Israel and Egyptians, and kind of like I was saying earlier, uh, I think it was in Sunday school, that the Egyptians. No, I would just send it up here today. But, but the Egyptians was not an ethnicity. It was not, see, because people, and I have to make this plain, because especially in, we're so quick to, if somebody was an Egyptian, like Hagar, oh, yeah, she was black. As if they all wasn't. I mean, <laughs> you know, this is, this is what has been taught. But the Bible don't say it. So they'll say Ham was black. See, th this stuff may not be important. This is important to people who, who, whose culture was stripped. Right? We, we, we need a foundation. Right? We need to understand the context of the Bible. We need to understand what God is saying. The Bible says understanding shall keep thee. So the Egyptians were descendants. So they were, so the Greeks called, so, okay, so Ham had four sons, Genesis 10 and 6. Ham had Cush, he had Mitzrayim, he had Put, and he had Canaan. Well, he, he had Mitzrayim, the Greeks called the Mitzrayimites Egyptians. But they called themselves Kim which means black. They call their land Kemet. This is history. But these were descendants of Mitzrayim. We're going we gonna, to we gonna get, get this today. Israel, Israel was Jacob. Jacob, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Jacob was a descendant. He was Abraham, Abraham's grandson. But I always say, if you're going to talk about, there's a foundation that has to be sure of. So we have to get the origin correct. And we have to go back to Ham, Shem, and Japheth and get that right. Because that's the root of a lot of problems. When we talk about the Bible and who is who, like I said, people are quick to mention certain Egyptians. Oh, yeah, they were black. Well, so... It's just a messed up. It gets messed up. So how do you go back to the origin and get that right? So we're going. And well, I've talked about this before. I've talked about this before. Um, but they weren't different races. The Bible does not confirm that. The context of Scripture. So <clears throat> understanding the ethnicity of the people in the Bible, understanding the ethnicity of the people in the Bible, gives clarity to the Bible. We avoid this. Why? But why do we avoid this? Why do we avoid this? Well, it's because of bondage mentality. But we're not, but, but Jesus died that we might be free. So why are we still there? Amen. 
Noah. So we talk about Noah and his three sons. We're going to talk about this because this is scripture. The Bible says all scripture is good for inspiration. It's good for reproof. It's good for doctrine. It said all scripture. Did it say all scripture? It said all scripture. So we're going we're gonna to break down Ham, Shem, and Japheth, right? Because we need a foundation. If we're going to talk about this. We need, to, we need a foundation. So the Bible says in Genesis 18 and 19, it says, Genesis 18 and 19. Genesis 9, I'm sorry. Genesis 9, 18 and 19. Somebody said we need the courage to stand. We need the courage to stand. God is delivering us as a people. Do you believe that? God is in the delivering business. Okay, so Genesis 9, 18, 19. We, a lot of us all know it by heart, but I'm going to read it anyway. It says, And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. When I see Canaan, I think about Melchizedek. We'll talk about that later. Verse 19, and these are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. Okay? So they say that Ham's, they say that Noah's sons were different races trying to say that this is why we have the different ethnicities today from Noah's three sons. But the implication that the world being different ethnicities because of Noah's sons being different ethnicities don't hold water, not according to the Bible. Amen. I'll just say this. So, so we're going to talk, so Noah's three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. All scholars that I've heard talk about this, scholars, theologians, historians, teachers, they agree on the ethnicity of only one son of Noah. They agree. I'm talking about, who, I'm talking about what the scholars agree. I'm not talking about what I believe. I'm talking, I'm talking about what is agreed upon. They agree on the ethnicity of only one son of Noah, which is Ham. They agree that Ham was what we call an African today. Mm -hmm. This is what they agree. I call this our common denominator. He is the only son of Noah with proof mm -hmm. of his ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Ham had four sons. Like we said, Genesis 10 and 6. Ham had four sons. Cush, with this, which the Greeks called Ethiopians. Strong's, Strong's G128 translates Ethiopian as a uh, scorched face, or really means to appear to be scorched. Ethiopian, Cushites. Ham had another son named Mitzrayam, which the Greeks called Egypt, but they called themselves Kim, like I said, and they called their land Kemet. That land that Kemet means land of black people, not land of black soil. But, but the ancient historian, ancient Greek historian Herodotus, he wrote in his work called Histories. He lived in 500 BC. Herodotus saw the ancient Egyptians face to face. This is 500 BC. He described them in his work called History. He described them as dark skinned with woolly hair. Ancient Egyptian, ancient Mitzrayanites, but they were descendants of one man, Mitzrayan. These were Ham's sons. Ham had another son named Put, which they called Libya. And, and originally, Libya, the Libyans were a Nubian people. They mixed now, but they was, they was originally a Nubian people. And then he had another son named Canaan. And I make the point, the land that is Israel now used to be called Canaan, the land of Canaan. And the land of Canaan was and still is in the continent of Africa. These are just some little cultural notes. Uh, that don't sound right to us because they use the term Middle East, but the Middle East is just a region. It's not an eighth continent. The continent is Africa. Israel sits on the African tectonic plate. I know y'all think, a lot of people think I'm just trying to make everybody black. <laughs> This is why I got to, Israel sits on the African, you can look this stuff up. Israel sits on what is called the African tectonic plate. Mm -hmm. 
want to spend too much time on that. But Israel is in the continent of Africa. Ham, Ham is the only son of Noah with proof of his ethnicity. I just explained to you, he had one son named Cush. They called the Cushites Ethiopians. <coughs> Mizraimites, they called the Mizraimites uh, Egyptians. Herodotus explained, he described them as dark skin with woolly hair. Mm -hmm. These were sons of Ham. So if Ham had sons who were Africans, Don't say Ham wasn't an African. It don't make sense. And I always say God wrote his word to intelligent people. Now, I see what, what I'm doing is we have we have been taught that Noah had three sons of three different ethnicities. That ain't so if, if you have a problem with what I'm saying, you sure should have a problem with that. Because how is some now, that ain't nowhere in the Bible. First of all, you, okay, so I've seen fluke cases where somebody may have, an, I've seen fluke cases where an African family have one white child. I've, I've seen that, right? Fluke case. But I have never, ever seen a case where an African family had a white child and a Chinese child. That's what they're trying to say, though. Noah had three sons of three different, think about that. So if you think so, if you're not going. If you think I'm saying something that's out the box, you really shouldn't accept that. But the context of Scripture it lines up with Noah's family being an African family because if Ham was an African, if you know that this is one person in any family, come on, man. It's, it's, it's not deep. It's, it ain't, it ain't, we just have, we're just untwisting what has been perverted. This ain't no deep stuff. We're just having to untwist a lot of this stuff. Because this is what has been taught to us. Only the truth will make us free. No, we'd rather stay in bondage. We'd rather stay in Egypt. Hmm. Must not be that important. But Ham was the only son with proof. He's the only son, I'm just saying, the scholars agree. The only one they agree on is Ham. So, I mean, you know, this is one person in the family. And the other two sons of Noah, Shem and Japheth, uh, there's a conversation about them, but there's nothing giving any hint of their ethnicity. I'm not making a big deal of that. We just, we, just, we just need a foundation, somewhere to start from. When we're reading the Bible, we need to know some things. So I'm just clarifying the context. There comes a time when we need a little more than milk. Now, turn to Hebrews. We're going to Hebrews 5. Because you got some who would say, well, you know, we just need to get back to the basics. And that's fine, you know, because that has a part. But I'll just say this concerning milk. You know, human beings are the only species on the planet that drinks milk as an adult. It's true on that for me. There are no other animals on earth that drink milk as an adult. Hmm. Especially the milk of another animal, breast milk of another animal. All right. This is true. So Genesis, I'm um, excuse me, Hebrews. Um, we're gonna start Hebrews chapter five. We're gonna start at verse five. Tell me, thank you. So it says, "So Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest." But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. We read the last time I was up here, that was in Psalms 110 and 4, where God made a prophecy about Jesus. Thou art a priest forever after the order 
of Melchizedek. And the order of Melchizedek meant Melchizedek, Genesis 18, I mean, excuse me, 14 and 17 and 18, when Abraham met him, Melchizedek was king and priest. This is why, this is why God was saying it. Melchizedek was king and priest. And nobody else in the Bible was both king and priest. Right? The priests were Levites, were sons of Aaron. Sons of Aaron were the priests, and the Levites helped them. But the kings, David, Saul, uh, Solomon, you know, Rehoboam, all of them were kings, but they weren't priests. Nobody was ever both a king and a priest in Hebrew culture. So God was making a prophecy about Jesus saying, Thou art a priest forever yes. after the order of Melchizedek because Melchizedek was both king and priest. Yes. The only human other than Jesus in the Bible who was a king and priest where Melchizedek was a Hebrew. But he was a temporal, he was a temple, uh, 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 he was a template of, of the type of priesthood that Jesus would have. Right? So, Verse 6 says, as he said also in another place, thou art a priest forever. The thou is talking about Jesus. Art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So it's just saying what type of priest that Jesus would have. Verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh, talking about Jesus now, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong cries and tears, unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in in that he feared. Verse 8. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Verse 10. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Same type of priesthood. That Melchizedek did. Verse 11. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Now, I made the point last time I was up here in the book of Hebrews. So, when, and when I go in my Bible, the first page of the book of Hebrews, it says the epistle of Paul, the apostle, to the Hebrews. This book was written specifically to the Hebrew people. That's why it's called. That's why it's called Hebrew. It wasn't written to the Gentiles. It was penned to the Hebrews because there was a unique conversation. You notice in the book of Hebrews, if you know, the, the term priest and priesthood is all the way through there. But in the books of Romans, to, to the Romans, to the Corinthians, that you will never see the word priest or priesthood because they didn't have that. So, so Paul was, make, was having a conversation about this new covenant of Jesus Christ to a people who had a priesthood. They were his people. They were Hebrews. So we had to speak in a certain language that they could relate to if they're going to receive this. But when he talked to the Gentiles, he didn't use the language of a priesthood or priests. Right. You won't see that in none of the letters to none of the Gentiles. He never used that language. So I'm just making a point. So, so Paul said, verse 11, he said, of many things to he said, of whom we have many, talking about Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say, hard to be uttered, see, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Paul was talking to his people, Hebrews. They were stuck. They were stuck. He said, ye are dull of hearing. Verse 12, it says, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of of the oracles of God. In other words, we have to go back and get the foundation right. Mm -hmm. He said, at the time when you ought to be teachers, you have one, you have need, talking about his people, the yeah. people who are supposed to be God's people, you have need that one teach you again, which become the which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become as, as and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. But Paul is trying to give them some meat now because God is taking us somewhere we've never been before. Yes. Verse 13. 
He says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Verse 14, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, which basically means uh, complete or mature. Even those who by reason of use have, excuse me, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. He said, this is who strong meat belongs to. Now, now milk is necessary because we do have a need, especially people who are, you know, new converts or maybe God is dealing with them. And sometimes we need to hear some basic stuff. Right? It has its place. But Paul is saying God has taken you somewhere you've never been before. We've got to grow. Mm -hmm. So he says, strong meat belongs to those, belong to them who are of full age, even those who by reason of use have, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Verse chapter 6. And I would say when they wrote this Bible, it wasn't broken up into chapters and verses, it was just one scroll. So this is a continuing conversation. Paul says, chapter 6, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Now, I, I try to keep making it plain. This word really means com completion. Complete. The original Greek word that's translated perfection means completion. Not laying again the foundation of right, excuse me, the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God and of doctrines of baptism, laying on hand and of resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Paul is just making a point, and we, we can keep on reading. Paul is just making a point. We can't always stay right there. If we're going to grow. Amen. 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 It has its place, but we got to grow. Yes. So, so milk has its place, but we're not, we're not supposed to stay on milk. Not all the time. Everything is not going to be. God is taking us somewhere because there are actually issues out there, real issues. Yes. And God is going to use some of you to answer some prayers out there. Yeah. How important is that to you? We're just clarifying context. So, Shem, the direct answer, ancestor of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Israel, was an African by ethnicity. This is the context of scripture. This is just the context of scripture. Like I can't, in my mind, I can't, I can't, it don't, nothing else makes sense to me. People can say all they want that, you know, nothing else makes sense. So, so like I said, if you're going to believe that, that, that Noah had three sons of three different races, if you'd rather go with that, but uh, I ain't got time for foolishness. So everything in the context of scripture, the context of scripture says that if Ham was an African, the Bible gives no hint that Noah's family was no superhuman family. It was everybody in the Bible was just like us, except for Jesus. Everybody in the Bible, there was no superhuman, di different types of, they were just regular people just like us. I see nothing in there that says otherwise. So, if you know, if, if Ham was an African, like I said, if you know the ethnicity of one person in any family, if I look at anybody in here, and you say, I say, okay, you say, your brother is outside, I go out there, I'm not looking for a Chinese guy. It just, we got to break these chains. All right, back to the text. <laughs> Exodus 14. Uh, so, so the Israelites and the Egyptians were not different ethnicities. I was just, I had to make that plain. 
uh, that they were not different ethnicities. They were different families. And, and when you read the Bible, it's, I think it's important to understand that when you see different people in the scriptures, because they have been worded to us in the context of ethnicities, you have to just see what the Bible says. I mean, I'm not trying to make nobody right and wrong. I'm just saying, just see what the Bible says. And it's nowhere in scripture that they were different ethnicities, not in the Old Testament. And this is foundation. Now, there are people like the Samaritans who were named after a city, but the Samaritans were Israelites who had been mixed in with other uh, other families, right? Because the Israelites, we, we, we're gonna get into that too. Um, but once again, if it's not in context, it's not true. And the Hebrews of the Bible did not separate their history from their worship like we have been trained to do. They didn't do that in the Bible. When I get up here, this, this is always going to be my angle. I'm, I'm, I'm not bound by what people say and this and that. I love everybody. Everybody is precious. Everybody is precious. But only the truth is going to make us free. I ain't got no time for no foolishness. So, but the Hebrews of the Bible, they didn't separate it. In, in the law that God gave them, he gave their history all the way back to Adam. When Stephen was being persecuted, when they were about to stone him, when they asked him for his side of the story, his side of the story, he gave the history all the way back to Abraham. This was a man of God. But then we say history don't belong in the church. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. It's not biblical. It's not biblical. That's this culture. I know, I know this is, but it's just the truth. That is this culture. That is a problem with this culture. This culture has a problem with history. But in the Bible, it was not like that. We need the courage to stand. God has taken us somewhere we've never been before. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So Israel told Moses they would rather have been enslaved. Mm -hmm. Woo. Oh, that's a problem. They would rather have been enslaved. What they said. It's not this, verse 12. It's not this the word that we said that we did tell thee in Egypt, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. Would have been better. It had been better for us to serve the Egyptians mm -hmm. than that we should be free. I would rather die free. Mm -hmm. Boy, that, that's strange talk. <laughs> You know, this is, the, this, is the, this is the mentality of a warrior. Israelites were warriors. Mm -hmm. That kind of talk is so foreign here. But I'm just talking about the Bible. I'm, see, I'm free. I, you know, <laughs> I'm free, but I'm, I'm free to serve. I'm, I'm free to be a blessing. I, I'm, I'm free to love, right? Yeah, yeah. But love begins at home. Mm -hmm. But if we don't have the context right, you, ain't no way you can get the truth if, it's, if the context is not right. How, how does that work? Don't let the feeling distract you from what God said. Amen. Don't let the feeling. My uncle Doyle wrote a song, Mr. Feelings, Miller, Mr. Feelings, you're a hindrance to my always doing good. If I listen and obey you, I will always find I never do the things I should. Many people listen to you and you ruin their lives. You drive them to their grave. But I'll enjoy the peace and joy of being in fun. I messed it up. <laughs> but Jesus came and freely came. Talk about Mr. Phillips. A powerful song. Yeah. Mr. Phillies, you're a hindrance to my always doing good. So what did God tell you? <laughs> Rehearse that in your ears. 
What did God tell you? Play music that rehearses that. Music can entertain you to sleep and keep you sleep. See, we don't like certain, and I'm talking to Christians now, we don't like certain gospel music, quote unquote rap or whatever, because we say it sounds cheesy. So what's important to you, man of God, woman of God? Because faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And hearing by the word of God. Yeah. No, I'm stepping on some toes. I love you, but we have to prepare, we have to prepare for war in the time of peace. Yeah. What did God tell you? We're talking about the courage to stand. Yeah. It ain't easy. You're going to need some strength to stand Amen. against the devil. Always take the opportunity to, re to rehearse in your ears what God said. Mm -hmm. This along with studying, prayer, fasting, and not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, Hebrews 10, 25, this will give us the courage to stand for what God said. Yeah. This is to me too. I need to do better too. This is to me too. I'm working on myself. But we need the courage to boldly, to boldly take a stand, to take God at his word while we are being delivered. Because the whole process of deliverance is, is, is an uncomfortable, unfamiliar process. Mm -hmm. Talking about real deliverance. It's not comfortable. It's unfamiliar. You got to trust, you got to trust somebody, something. If you're going somewhere you've never been before, you got to trust somebody or something. Yeah. This right here has never, it had never let now, now. It, it has never let me down. It let never let anybody down. But I will tell you, a lot of the problem a lot of black people have is, is how this Bible was used to enslave us. And that's a problem. I get it. I respect that. that that's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's real stuff. They use this Bible. Right? They use this Bible. Servants, obey your master. So, so they had they had um, <clears throat> this is talking about history. So this I was listening to this white lady, older white lady talk, and she was explaining, talking to this younger black lady, she was explaining, it was at Fisk University, and she was explaining that her ancestors, uh, she, well, she said we, she said we would have your people, talking to a young black lady, she said we would let you guys have church, talking about the enslaved people. I don't like calling them slaves because they were not slaves. They were not slaves. They were teachers, they were professors, they were entrepreneurs, they were warriors, they were parents, they were made to be slaves, but the people themselves don't call them slaves. Because you're taking the humanness out of them. I don't call them slaves, but they were enslaved. Right? But, so she was making the point that she, she, she said that uh, we would allow the enslaved people to have church. She said, but many times there were spies sent out there. I mean, this is just, she said, many times there were spies sent out there. She said, if that preacher would preach anything other than three messages, she said he would be beaten or probably killed. And she said, those three messages were turn the other cheek, obey your master, and just put up with what you're putting up with. It's going to get better in the by and by. She said, if that preacher preached anything other than those three messages, she's talking about why they were enslaved. Mm -hmm. She said, if he preached anything other than those three messages, he would be beaten or probably killed. Mm -hmm. And then she said, this white lady, she had a beautiful spirit. This white lady said, and they're still doing it. Talking about black people. Mm -hmm. 
They're still doing the same thing. Still preaching the same types of message. In other words, not going outside of that box. That's just a sign of mental bondage. Like I said, I'm in there too. This is to all of us. So you gotta understand when we come out, when we come out, and uh, this is Paul said, "My God shall supply all of my needs." This is a need. Somebody tried to tell me, well, Paul, you don't understand the context of that. You know, Paul was talking to people who were helping him. I said, are you saying that God don't care about needs? What are you saying? Well, <laughs> context is good, but <laughs> if that's the case, we can't, every, everything in the Bible was written to somebody, so we can't, we can't take none of it. Because it was all written to somebody. That's just foolishness. Mm -hmm. Paul said, my God shall supply all of my needs. Yeah. You can use that. Because yeah. he will. He will supply all of your needs. Yeah. Yeah. That no foolishness. And he was just saying that, trying, trying to, he didn't like some of the other stuff I was saying, so he was just, it was, it was kind of, mm -hmm. just a personal conversation. But, but it's a need, though. This is my conviction on this right here. I've been saying this for years. This is a need. God supplies needs. So I have a problem when we look over needs. I don't care what the need is. I have a problem with that. So, so she, she, she told that story. She said, she said, they're still doing it today. They're still only preaching. Basically, turn the other cheek. Uh, Obey your master. Put up with what you're putting up with. And that last one is the main thing. Put up with what you're putting up with. It's going to get better in the by and by. And like I was making the point that salvation, the word salvation, doesn't just mean heaven. And I made the point when I was up here the last time I asked the question, when does our salvation begin? So salvation and eternal life was used synonymously in the Bible. You, can, you look that up, it was all salvation and eternal life was always used, inter, they were used synonymously. Right? So they, when it says eternal life, it was meaning salvation. Salvation was meaning eternal life. So I was asked the question last time I was up here, when does our eternal life or salvation begin? And we went, we don't have to go there just today because we did it the last time I was up here, but 1 John 5, 11 and 12 actually says that we have this eternal life. We have this life. We, we, we've been given eternal life. I'm going to go ahead and read. Which, okay. Okay. Uh, so 1 John 5 11 it says, and this is the record that God has given unto us eternal life. So the question was, when does our eternal life begin? Does, does it begin when we die? Does our eternal life begin on Judgment Day? That was the question. When does our eternal life or salvation begin? So 1 John 5 11 says, and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. This life, which is talking about eternal life, is in his Son. He that had the Son had life. He that had not the Son of God had not life. So that's saying that our eternal life begins when we accept Jesus. When we accept the Son. Does that everybody agree? Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. That's what John said. That was the Apostle John. He said, our, he said, he said, he that had the Son of God and life. We were talking about eternal life. Salvation. So our eternal life don't begin when we die. Our eternal life don't begin when we on judgment day. Our eternal life begins right now when you accept Jesus into your heart. Salvation. And salvation, I was also explaining the, the word salvation comes from the word saved. Salvation is a Hebrew word, Yeshua, Jesus' name. In the Greek, it's the word soteria, but they come from the Hebrew word yasha, and in the Greek, comes from the Greek word sozo, 
And I was making a point the last time I was up here, I gotta reiterate all of this. So I'm making a point the last time I was up here that, <clears throat> that the word um, sozo means to be whole. The, be, the word that's translated saved means to be whole. This is what salvation really means, to be completely whole, to be completely delivered, completely free, salvation. This was God's plan. So when Jesus said to the leper, the one leper who came back after he healed 10 of them, and one, one came back, Jesus said, wasn't there 10, where are the nine? Jesus said, thy faith has made thee whole. That's the same word. The same word that's translated whole is the same word that's translated saved, sozo. Mm -hmm. Jesus says to the woman who had the issue of blood, thy faith has made thee whole. That same word whole is the same word that's translated saved. Matter of fact, every time in the Bible that Jesus says thy faith has made thee whole, it's always the word sozo that's translated saved. God's plan for us is to be whole, complete. Nothing is supposed to be missing. Amen. Nothing in our spiritual life, nothing in our marriages, nothing in our families, nothing is supposed to be missing in our health, nothing is supposed to be missing in our history and culture either. Amen. This is part of the package of salvation. And it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. This is God's plan for everybody is that you be whole. It's just that with us, we are overlooked. We overlook ourselves because that's what we were taught to do. And, and we've got to come out of that. We need the courage to boldly take God at his word when we are being delivered. <laughs> Woo! All right. All right. All right. I'm, I'm about to wrap this up. Uh, turn over to 2 Chronicles 15. I'm just going to touch on this right quick. I say, God, we thank you for your word. Yes, we do. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah. So, Second Chronicles chapter 15. I'm just going to read a few. I want to read a lot, but I'm going to read a few for the sake of time. Um, so, so, this is talking about uh, Asa, Asa was a, Asa was, I think he was a great grandson of Solomon, and he was king of Judah. Uh, he was a son, he was a grandson of, of uh, Rehoboam, Rehoboam, I think he was named. Anyway, um, I, I'm going to go ahead and read the first verse, 15 and 1. It says, And the Spirit of God came upon As Azariah, the son of Oded. Now, uh, Judah was being attacked, I'm just for context, Judah was being attacked uh, by Ethiopians and some other people in the, in, the follow, in the previous chapter. And Asa cried unto the Lord. Right? So, verse, uh, chapter 15. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa and all Judah and Benjamin. And I made the point last week in Sunday school, I was talking, making the point that the word Jew in the Bible was actually, it wasn't an ethnicity. It was, it was referring to the southern kingdom. First time I see the word Jew, first time I see the word Jew in the Bible, 2 Kings 16 and 6, and I made the point they were at war with Israel at that time. They were at war with Israel. So it wasn't a religion, it wasn't an ethnicity, not in the Bible. They make it all a bunch of stuff. I'm talking about in the Bible. We got to understand the foundation, mm -hmm. right? So Judah and Benjamin were the tribe, main tribes of the southern kingdom. After Solomon died, it was split into two kingdoms. Uh, uh, Jeroboam was king of the Israel, which was the northern kingdom. Southern kingdom kept the, uh, had the name Judah. Northern kingdom was called Israel. They kept the name Israel. Southern kingdom was called Judah. At one time, it was all Israel, but after Solomon died, they split. So Israel was called, the northern kingdom was called Israel. Southern kingdom was called Judah, which the Bible translates as Jews. The word Jew is, is translated from the word Yehuda, which means Judah. It's talking about the southern kingdom. So verse 2, it says, And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, 
and all Judah and Benjamin. So that's the southern kingdom. The Lord is with you. But Asa was the king of the southern kingdom of Israel. So the Lord is with you while ye be with him. God is with you when you're with him. Like God is not going to be with you and you are not, we are not in him. So this man of God was encouraging this. He said, he said, the Lord is with you while you be with him. If ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Verse 3. For, now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. Verse 4. And when they were in trouble, and when they were in Excuse me. But when they in their trouble did turn to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Verse 5. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations or confusion, there was a lot of confusion amongst the people, were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. Verse 6. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Verse 7, be strong therefore, now this is Azariah speaking to Asa. He says, be, verse 7, be strong therefore, let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Amen. God says, be strong, God was speaking through this man of God. He said, be strong therefore, let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Verse, listen, verse 8. When Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded, the prophet, he took courage. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to hear something yeah. that's going to encourage you, right? To just do what God told you to do. Amen. So he said, the Bible says, he took courage when he heard those words and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin, and out of all the cities which had taken, uh, which he had taken from Mount Ephraim, and, and, and renewed the altar of the Lord, that was before the porch of the Lord. Verse 9, and he gathered all Judah and Benjamin, so we're talking about the southern kingdom, and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh. And out of Simeon. So they were out of the northern kingdom. And I made the point last week in Sunday school that in the southern kingdom, in the southern kingdom, uh, there were people from the northern kingdom who had came down. Basically, the Jews, even in the New Testament, they really represented anybody living in the southern, any Israelite. They could be from any tribe, but they were living in the southern kingdom. They were called Jews which really meant Judahites. And in the New Testament, they called them Judeans. Mm -hmm. So he says, and he, t and he gathered all Judea and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh. That was in the, that was in the Northern Kingdom. Um, and out of Simeon. There was another tribe in the Northern Kingdom. For they fell, listen, for they fell to him out of Israel. Israel was a Northern Kingdom. In abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with them. So these Israelites, when they saw that God was with Asa, they came down. <laughs> they came down where the party was. They came down where it was good. They came down where the presence of God was because God was fighting for them. Yeah. So they came down. They said, we ain't, because up there, they, it was bad. They had, take, they had put God's priest out and put he put his own priest in, and it was just a mess up in the northern kingdom. So some people had some sense, and they came down. Um, but Asa put away a lot of those idols, and I just wanted to. So there are a lot of things that we have to do in taking a stand. Now, I want to touch on these holidays. Like Valentine's Day. And, and these are just things that, that I know we don't know. At least I did, right? There's a saying, there's a saying that says, uh, a lady, a young girl wanted to know why her mama was cutting the end of the ham off, right? <laughs> so 
she asked her mom, she noticed her mom cut the end of the ham off before she put it in the pan and put it in the oven. So she asked her mom, why you cut the end of the ham off? She said, I don't know, this is what my mom always did. So the girl asked her grandmother, Grandma, I asked Mama, why did she cut the end of the ham off? She said, that's what you always did. She said, so why you do that? The girl says, I don't know, that's what my mom always did. So her great-grandma was still living, so she went to her great-grandma. I went to Mama and I asked why she cut the end of the ham off before she cooked it. She said, that's what her mama did. I went to Grandma. She said, that's what her mama did, so now I'm coming to you. Great grandma, why do you cut the end of the ham off before you cook them? Great grandma said, I don't know why they were doing it, but my pan was too small. <laughs> so we're just doing a lot of things and not even knowing why we're doing them. I can kick out of this story. So, listen, all, all, all holidays aren't bad, but there are some that as Christians, we really shouldn't have a party. Amen. Valentine's Day is one of them. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know Valentine's Day is, you know, it's, it's seen as a day of love. Uh, but the origin, the origin, Valentine's Day originated in the pagan, I'm just going to read just a little bit in a pagan Roman festival called Lupercalia, held in mid-February, celebrating the coming of spring, including, in, in, including fertility rites and the pairing off of women and men by lottery. At the end of the fifth, at the end of the fifth century, Pope Gal Galesus the first replaced Lupercalia with St. Valentine's Day. Now, that's just a real little bit because you get into Cupid and all of the, it's really, some, it's really not supposed to celebrate. Christians aren't supposed to celebrate Valentine's Day. It's just, well, when you understand the root of it, somebody said the root. When you understand the root, I don't know how you get good fruit from bad root. Hmm. Easter, now I'm not talking about resurrection. I'm talking about the Easter bunny. Amen. We've got to talk about these things because the churches, we, 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 just, we just got to talk about these things. So the Easter bunny arrived in the U.S. in the 1700s with German immigrants who settled in Pennsylvania and brought their tradition of an egg-laying rabbit. A tradition. It wasn't true. It was a tradition. Mm -hmm. Called an Osterhase or, or an Osterhals. Their children made, the rabbits' children made nests in which this creature would lay its colored eggs. And, not, and there is nothing, and, and these are just very, like, surface stuff. You, you can, I want to encourage you to dig into this because we need to understand why we're doing some of the things we're doing out there. They're not just harmless. They're not, that's, this is what the enemy does. He will have you thinking, oh, it's just a white lie. No such thing as a white lie. A lie is a lie. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, I had, I, I remember, you know, I had fun as a, as a child, you know, looking for Easter eggs and stuff, you know, because children are going to have fun and whatever. If it's fun, it's fun. For yeah. a child, it's up to the parents to guide them. Yeah. Okay, so that's. But but I'm not I'm not saying anything about the resurrection that you know the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a completely different kind. I'm talking about the Easter bunny and the eggs is foolishness. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was not originally the kumbaya that we would talk between the so-called pilgrims and the Wampanoag tribe, Native Americans. It was a bad situation. I'm not gonna get into all of that because you can look it up. But the history of that was a they, uh, you talk about Thanksgiving to the Native Americans, it's not a good thing. Okay, I don't, now let me make this clear. Any time that we're coming together with family is good. I'm always down for that. Family coming together is always a beautiful thing. We just need to understand what we're doing. Mm -hmm. No more just doing stuff, just cutting off the end of the hand, we don't even know why.
And July 4th, uh, so July 4th is, is a, the only issue with July 4th, and, and like so these are just things, we just, the context is very important. Uh, the issue is we just, just for black people, we just need to understand that July 4th, 1776, we were still like this right here. Okay, just, just understand, you do what you want to do, but just understand, Frederick Douglass said, Frederick Douglass, Douglass in his famous speech said, that's not my holiday, it's yours. But you do what you want to do. I just, I'm just saying, just understand that 1776, July 4th, my ancestors and yours too were, yeah. well, they were enslaved. Amen. They weren't free. It wasn't an independence day for a black. Oh, okay. Just understand that. Just, I, I don't care about no other, I'm just saying, just understand that. Understand that, and we, we we know Christian. Excuse me. We know Christmas is is pagan in the sense of the commercial stuff. Uh, we celebrate the, the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, but just 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 understanding. Bible says, understanding shall keep us. And like I said, enough, enough, enough. We're doing things and don't know why we're doing them. We need the courage to stand. God is God has taken us somewhere we've never never been before. Uh, but this is not free. The enemy will attack you for the word's sake. Yeah. You have to be willing. How important is it to you? This is not free. God has taken us somewhere we've never been before. Okay, but He's glorified in you. He's glorified in you when you receive his salvation, when you receive his gift. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's glorified in us. Uh, and, and like I said, you know, heaven is in the package of salvation. I need to make that claim. I, 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 so salvation is not just heaven. Heaven is a reward. Mm -hmm. Right? We got heaven and then we got hell. We, we, we got to make a choice. God said, I said before you, life and death, yeah. blessings and curse. He said, you choose. He said, choose life, though. But we, so we have a choice. But still, the enemy, like Grandma used to say, the devil is not going to sit back and play jacks while you're doing what God told you to do. Amen. You are going to be attacked. Jesus said, Jesus said to Peter, he says, Satan's desire to sift you. Mm -hmm. That he may have you as wheat. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, but I have prayed for you, Peter. Mm -hmm. But Jesus didn't pray that Satan wouldn't have Peter to sift him as wheat. He didn't pray that Satan would not sift Peter as wheat. Jesus said, I'm praying for you that your faith fail you not. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said, and when thou art converted, <laughs> I like that. In other words, you're going to win. The devil ain't going to get you. He says, when thou art converted. He didn't say if. Jesus said, when you are converted, go strengthen your brother. Woo! Because it ain't just for you. Right. It's not just for you. God is taking us somewhere we've never been before, but it's not just for us. Amen. How important is that to you? I'm done doing just the, just the church thing. Like, uh, was that uh, Tamla Mann said, I'm all church foul. <laughs> okay. Woo! Well, no, no, we need the church. That's not what I'm saying. We need the church. <laughs> we definitely need the church. I'm saying I'm all church out, as in just like going through the motion. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am church out. Amen. That's got to be a purpose. Amen. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. So if there's no purpose, I don't want nothing to do with it. I, I'm, I'm serious. I'm so serious. I don't want nothing to do with it. If there's not a purpose in it, I ain't got time. I go do something else. But I see so much in this word right here. And it's so liberating. Right? God loves everybody. Everybody is somebody. But he's calling us to a higher place. We got to have the courage to stand. Mm -hmm. God has given us that courage. Mm -hmm. 
Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17. Hearing by the word of God. I would have, if I had time, I would have went to Ephesians and God says, having done all to stand. He, didn't, he, he, he says stand, but he says stand after having done all. Yeah. There is something that we have to do. Yeah. Yep. Amen. We're waiting on God, but many times God is waiting on us. Right. I'm telling you, God is going to use some of you to be the answer to somebody's prayer out there. Amen. Mm -hmm. God uses people. He'll use you. Yeah. Yeah. How important is that? So God is doing a new thing. Be encouraged, family. He loves you. He loves you. He says, finally, my brother, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. Having done all, I got to, I got to get there. Mm -hmm. We're going to finish with that right there. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6. God is concerned about his people. Amen? Amen. Everybody believes that. God is concerned about his people. Yes. Yes. There's nothing that's going on in your life that God is not concerned about. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, Finally, my brethren, mm -hmm. by the time I read the whole thing, it says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Right? Not strong in yourself, strong in the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God, not just part of it. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the attacks of the devil. Yeah. The devil, the enemy, is going to attack. He's supposed to attack. Amen. Amen. That's his job. Yeah. He's supposed to attack. Yeah. But God gave you something. He gave you, he gave you uh, uh, armor mm -hmm. and he gave you a weapon. Yeah. Yeah. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the attacks of the devil. Verse 12. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is not about the people. This is not, we're not mad at no people. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I made this statement before, you know, this is, this is over the airwaves. If anybody listening to this thinking that I'm Thinking that I'm talking about a particular ethnicity, I think you're thinking a little too much of yourself. Because this is not this is about the needs of God's people. But that's what a lot of people do. They they think, you know, mm -hmm. amen. God bless his people. But I'm I'm just saying that's that's no, that's that's not everything is not about that. It's just the truth. We need to understand God's word. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, mm -hmm. against powers, mm -hmm. against the rulers of the darkness of this world, mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is the problem. Yeah. It's the principalities, it's powers, it's rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness that are in high places. Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And there will be an evil day. We, we, we first last time we looked at, uh, in uh, Corinthians, talked about uh, God says your work will be tried by fire. Mm -hmm. Your work will be tried by fire, what sort it is. And, 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 and God says the same work, that the same fire that burns up the fleshly work is going to save you. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. So verse 13 says, For wherefore take, up, take, on, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all, then stand. Mm -hmm. Having done all, stand. Verse 14 Stand therefore, and this is how you stand. Yes. Having your loins, but there's some stuff you, the Bible says, he says, having done all, then stand. Mm -hmm. But when you stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with what? Truth. Truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. That means living right. Living right, right standing with God. Mm -hmm. 
That's your breastplate. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. Above all, taking the shield of faith, yes. wherewith you, ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Verse 17, and the helmet, and take the helmet of salvation, and you got one weapon, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yes. Verse 18, praying with praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching there thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, saints. that utterance may be given unto me, all the saying that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel which I am ambassador in bonds. Paul said, the only thing that I'm bound to is the gospel, the word of God, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That's my prayer for each one of you. God will give you the grace to stand, the courage to stand, to speak what God, to, what thus said the Lord, to do what God told you to do. That is your purpose. We, in, our, in Sunday school today, we talked about how John, John had followers. Yeah. John saw Jesus. He said, behold, the Lamb of God. The Bible says the followers of John, John's disciples started following Jesus. Yeah. John didn't have a problem with it no. because John knew his purpose. Yeah. Knowing your purpose, give, and that takes a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. So be encouraged family. Uh, God has given us the courage to stand. Yes. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Amen. Amen. God is doing a new thing. He's doing God and God, God is a, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But he's doing a new thing in the land. Yes. He's always doing a new thing. He's always working by his spirit. Yes. Always. He's calling us up. He's taking us somewhere we've never been before. Amen. Amen.